I'm Stefan, I'm an uh, audio technical artist for Epic Games, and together we're going to see different ways to visualize uh, meta sounds and audio uh, in different ways using uh, user experience, user UI, and Niagara. But before I start, uh, let me make sure that what is an audio technical artist? And that is an excellent question that I wrote myself. Uh, it's pretty much something we made up because I actually am a technical artist. So normally I work with automotive brands where I learned to push uh, Unreal to the maximum limits, uh, burning GPUs after GPU. Uh, bingo, it looks good. So I learned how to do very uh, complex shaders to kind of uh, match the expectations of clients. After that, I had a brief stint in uh, virtual production. So I kind of learned how to tone things down because everything had to run at 120 uh, frames per second. I learned some blueprinting on the side. So that's kind of like my, my background. Now, why is this really related to audio? Uh, I've always had a phase of, uh, when I was a teenager, I had the drum and bass phase. The phase is still alive today. Um, so I, re I really love music where synthesizer really pushed to the limit or sound design. So kind of that led me into the sound design environment and background, but I never did anything professional. It's just kind of a hobby on the side. So when Meta Sounds was created, it was like the perfect tool for me because I could combine my visual knowledge of Unreal, like my basic blueprinting and then, uh, you know, Meta Sounds, which is pretty much a cool synthesizer in my head to kind of create interesting uh, visual uh, components. So I'm pretty much the bridge between the rendering team and the audio team trying to like take what the, the guys are making at Meta Sounds, you know, the crazy tools, make maybe interesting little uh, projects and demos. And then hopefully they'll convince maybe some, maybe not so audio uh, inspired people to maybe start getting into audio work. So what we're going to see here is I'm going to, you know, section one is pretty much the narcissistic phase. I'm just showing like, look what I can do. Um, in, in, uh, in the, like, more seriously, is hopefully this will inspire people to see like what you can do alone with like just Unreal without going outside of Unreal, how you can create like little projects. There's also some R&D that I did for, uh, for Epic Games. So it's kind of a mix of everything. After that, we're going to see some UI designs that I made. Aaron already pre presented some last time, uh, but this time I'll be a bit more in depth. After that, we're going to see Niagara and Meta Sounds. So for those who don't know, Niagara is uh, the particle system in Unreal. It's insanely powerful. I'm by far not an expert because it's just so deep, but the fact that it has a built-in audio frequency analyzer makes it insane because it means that you can connect pretty much any value one from your audio to any particle value, but we'll go into details later on. And then the oscilloscope experiments is pretty much still Niagara, but a bit more in depth. And then finally, I'm going to show how I combine everything I do together with a little UI uh, experiment and interface, and then some Q&A if there are any. So let me just show you some demos I made in the past year. Uh, and again, yeah, these are kind of prototypes work in progress. So yeah, enjoy.
cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and as you can see, yeah, there's really no limit to creativity. So it's really fun to create like an interface that's completely unusual and then just throw it away to someone and see what they make with it. But to get in a more like serious interface, obviously we still need to have some reasonable interface from time to time. So that's what I did. I did a bunch of um, prototypes for Epic Games, which is infinitely scalable. So if I was lazy or, well, not lazy, the traditional way to create UI would maybe use Photoshop or Illustrator, curate some sliders, some knobs and whatnots, and use it as a texture. But that would be too easy and too simple, right? So why not do everything using only maths? Because that way you can infinitely scale uh, them up or down. You'll never see like texture compression and GPU doesn't use anything. So some things were pretty straightforward. I definitely had to go way back in my mind and remember like some basic uh, trigonometry from high school. Like just, it's been a while since I used that uh, for the curves and, and so on. So I made, uh, I made a little compilation of all the knobs and uh, things I made. The blueprinting is still, you know, proof of concept. So it's still uh, prototypes. It's not built in, but we would like to build in uh, Unreal so you can kind of create your own presets or your own like little synths. Uh, kind of like what Aaron said, if you saw his talks, uh, sometimes you have two VSTs. But it's the same sound, but one has better UI. Maybe you'll be more inclined to kind of move around, uh, play around with it. Maybe it'll even sound better in your head, even though it's the same sound, it's just like better UI. So that's why UI is, is probably uh, quite important. So again, all of these, 100% mathematics, there's no texture uh, involved. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. One of the things that is the most difficult to me is kind of stay within the bounds. So UI work was actually quite hard for me uh, mentally to keep things uh, regular. So thankfully, the next part is a bit more insane. Uh, Niagara, as I said, is a pretty very powerful particle system in Unreal. So uh, yeah, it, I never used it before. Uh, and actually, MetaSounds kind of uh, allowed me to investigate Niagara a lot more. And it's a bit scary at first. So I'll kind of go in detail how I created some of those Niagara presentations from scratch. That way, hopefully, you guys can see it's not that crazy. And hopefully, maybe it'll inspire you to go uh, you know, in that direction, maybe create your own little Winamp simulation or, or something like that. Um, so in the next video, the first video is pretty much me the first time I used Niagara and just applying audio effects to random particle attributes. So it's a bit messy. And then after that, I made a 3D cascade frequency analyzer which again, uh, sounds very complicated to do, but I was surprised how easy it is because the great guys are, you know, programmers at Epic, they made like an insane tool. And then the third video will be kind of a real time reactive Niagara system that reacts to actually audio coming from your computer. So you could actually use audio from Spotify or VLC or whatever you want and Niagara would react to it. That's a bit more, it's pretty much the same principle because you actually use the mic system in Unreal Engine. The only difference is you kind of have to set up your own computer to kind of reroute the output to the mic. So that's kind of the annoying part, but otherwise, you know, it works pretty, pretty well.
All right, which is, <laughs> thank you again. <laughs> I have a lot of videos, but I appreciate all the, all the support. Um, yeah, it's also great for these, for these demos because I have so many you know, unreleased music. I just basically <laughs> use them for, for demos, which is pretty cool. Um, so this is the more uh, complicated part. I'm going to explain how I pretty much made uh, this part of uh, the cascade. It won't be as advanced as this version, but it will kind of show you how I can set it up from scratch. So first of all, uh, let's create a new Niagara system. There's an empty system right here, or you can go new system from selected emitters, which is uh, all the presets. And then you have a preset called empty, which it doesn't make that much sense. Um, but actually, this version of MT has a, a lot of setup done for you because it's, you know, otherwise this talk is going to be way too long. So I'm really just going to call this demo very original and open this up. So this, unfortunately, I can't zoom in more. So hopefully you guys can see uh, at least a tiny bit. So how it works is that you have an emitter, which is this, which is constantly, right now it's not spawning anything because it's empty but it's kind of in the loop. So the first thing that I'm going to set up is to make sure that it's using the GPU. The main difference is that the GPU can handle like many, many particles. And once again, I come from like rendering cars and not caring about burning GPU. So I'm spawning like 100,000 particles with like, uh, you know, gravity applied to them and everything. So GPU is a lot better. And then it's just going to ask you uh, to stay in fixed bounds. So this, it's like this. So it's kind of limited and it's not like a crazy particle system that's around the world. Um, let me see. You have emitter updates. So this is how many times emitter will kind of refresh itself. Right now it's set to system. So let's set it to self. That way you can define ourself like how it works. So what's happening right now is that every second, the loop duration, the emitter starts again. You're probably going to see it right here, uh, kind of looping. So what we're going to do is in initialize particle. We're going to make sure the particle is one second long. It can be anything. It can be five and five if you want. It's really just to kind of keep a nice normalized number. So in emitter updates, uh, let's go spawn particles and grid. I'll explain why we have to use uh, the grid system in a while. But first of all, right when you select that, there's an error. It says da, 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 da. a lot of text, boring, boring, boring. We have a fix issue button, which should be standard in every piece of software, I think. Uh, it's insane. I love that thing. So sometimes it's actually faster to create errors and then just fix, 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 fix instead of setting it up from scratch. Uh, but yeah, if you play around, you'll figure that one out. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I just need the grid for like to create a line of particles. So that's going to be the base of our analyzer software. I'm using 1,024 samples, uh, sorry, not samples, particles, which might sound like a lot, but it's actually pretty, pretty reasonable for me anyways. Um, and there we go. We have a beautiful line. Aaron's mouse is super sensitive. I'm like more of a less sensitive mouse. Sorry for the, <laughs> the sudden brutal movements. Uh, so we go, we're going to go to initialize particle. And that's where you're going to decide, like we saw before, the lifetime of a particle. But let's choose also the size to a uniform size. Let's just put one. So it's, uh, yeah, maybe that's not visible enough. Let's put four. There we go. That's a bit better. So the reason I use the grid is that Unreal knows uh, like how large the, um, the line of particles is. Because you kind of need to make sure that things communicate with other things. So the audio system needs to know which particle is assigned to which frequency. So one thing I'm going to use instead of padding per cell in the grid location system is I'm just going to use uh, bounding box size. So that way you can kind of define the size of your analyzer pretty easily. Because if it's like uh, padding per cell, it's going to be the distance between each uh, particle, which you know is a bit annoying to calculate. So this is much easier. And when you modify this value, Unreal kind of updates it itself. But imagine there's like an invisible box wrapping this system right here, and it knows that the particles to the left is like technically particle zero, and the particle to the right is one, and then it interpolates between each other because it's normalized. And that's why I use this system. But again, it's so powerful, you could literally use anything else. This is just like how I like to, to work. So in here, I'm going to create a new uh, existing parameter. So what this does is allows you to kind of get information from the Niagara system and then store it somewhere so you can reuse it. So this is, this is kind of the boring part. It's not super entertaining, but unfortunately, we have to go through it to kind of get to the good part. So yeah, let's create a new float, a new value. And the important part is to rename that float. I'm going to call it uv underscore x. It can be anything you want. 
UV, if you don't know what it is, is pretty much the same as X and Y in a graphing. And unfortunately in 3D space, for some reason, Z is upwards, whereas in mathematics is like, uh, yeah. So don't ask me, I'm not responsible for that, but yeah. Uh, let's go uh, float from vector, if I write it down correctly. Float from vector, where is it? Probably need to write vector, I can't be too lazy either. So again, that's why I created the grid, is I just want to make sure that I'm extracting the x value of the grid to kind of store it into our UVX. So right here, I'm going to search for grids, and that's why I use the grid system, is that Niagara will create the grid UVW, which is XYZ pretty much. So now you're saying like, okay, now we have a new value, it's stored there, and it's defined by the size of the grid we're going to use. Now, here's the fun part, is called the scratch add module. I don't know why it's called that, but this is pretty much where you'll get all the information from all the, um, the particles, apply anything you want to them, and then store them back. So that's where you're going to have the audio-related stuff. So finally, some audio-related content. Uh, you have an audio oscilloscope, a player, and a spectrum. Now, we're gonna, not going to look at the player that much, but pretty much imagine that you can play an audio file when the particle does something. So let's say when a particle finishes its animation, it plays a sound for fireworks or something like that. We're going to use the spectrum, though. I'm not going to rename it because I'm lazy. And then let's go to audio spectrum. And that's why we created the grid before, is that we have normalized position in spectrum. Uh, so we need to tell Unreal like which particle applies to which frequency range. So we're going to go to parameters. You can go to all the parameters we created. And if I search for UVX, it's right there, the thing you created. It's just an easy shortcut to kind of say, this value, I need to reuse it later on. So create it like I did it before. And then now you can just plug it in easily. Oops. Like I said, the mouse is very, very uh, sensitive. Um, so we're going to take the particle position, because what I want is to move each particle upwards depending on the volume of each frequency. So Let's write position correctly. That's probably better. Still not. So we have particle position. What we want to do is we want to break it. Again, sorry for the terrible writing. Um, the reason is that we want to make sure that wherever we spawn our particles, we don't go like completely out of range. So all I'm doing here is I'm going to plug the position back into position. And we need to make sure uh, something that when you start with a uh, Negra is that you might like use this position, and it's actually local position, it's not particle position. So that's something you need to bear in mind, otherwise it won't work. So if you put like particle position, that way you know it's the same thing. So in, you have break position to kind of split them up, and then you have make position. So what I'm going to do here is plug the x back into the x, the y back into the y, because again, if you use maths, it's going to be a bit confusing, but z is upwards, as you can see right here. So we're going to, we could plug the amplitude right into the z directly, or another part of the scratch cards is to create your own uh, inputs. So if I put float and write like intensity, and then I can multiply this with intensity, plug this in here, and that should be working right away. So when I go back to this set, uh, setup, when you see the scratch module, right now you have new uh, parameters. And this is the insanely cool thing, is that you have a built-in frequency range. So you could isolate just the base and then assign that to a particle system, then assign the mid-range to another particle system. Maybe one, like the base, will change the color. Maybe the mid-range will change the size. It's really up to you. You can go absolutely nuts with that. Um, and the resolution is pretty much as it says. So if the analyzer like is set to 16, you're going to have like super low res uh, an, um, a range. And that's why I did uh, 1024. Again, I push everything to the maximum. So the slider was maximum there. So when I spawned the particles in the early uh, stages, I spawned 1024 particles simply because each particle will now be assigned to a right frequency range. And in the intensity, let's write not 1,000, 100. And this can react to any submix you send it to, which is quite useful if you want to isolate like a certain part of your audio. When it's off by default, it reacts to any audio within Unreal. So it's quite cool because you can just go into your content browser and like play, uh, you know, play sound wave. There you go.
So this is cool and all, but it's, you know, it's a bit dull. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this one. Most importantly is to rename an emitter, something I keep forgetting to do, but I'm going to call this uh, free, uh, just free, whatever. That's fine. And then here we're going to delete most of the stuff we did because what I want to do is something that's also very, very cool. Let's delete that, let's delete that, let's delete that. Is you can spawn particles from another emitter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spawn the particles here. Again, you have fixed issue, which is awesome, just fixed issue. And then there's another issue here, fixed issue. <laughs> it's set up correctly. It's, it's awesome. Um, all you have to do is write the, the emitter name that you want to spawn it from. So let's write this. And let's say we want the particles to last a bit longer. So let's say we want the particles to be five seconds long. Let's go back to initialize particle. Like I said, it's, it's a bit complex at first, but you realize it's the same steps over and over again. Now, the cool thing I'm going to add here is uh, velocity, because I want the particles to spawn at the right positions. And right now, it's like spawning in a weird way uh, to kind of create a fake histogram. So here, let's say I'm going to put like 100 and this one to 0. Actually, I think I want it the other way around, 200. And here we have a multiplier, which is quite nifty. There you go. One thing I don't like is by default, it kind of tries to understand the interpolation, which is not what I need. So thankfully, you have different options. Uh, like here, you have sequential. I'm going to use random. Much better. And so now, if I play audio, you have a histogram. And I mean, once you have that, you can just go wild. You can obviously now it's white, so it's maybe not more, uh, not very interesting. So you can actually colorize. You can scale the color depending on the volume of frequencies. You can scale the sizes, like I said. So let's go to scale color. Let's go. This is just stuff that you'll probably see on most like Niagara tutorials. Um, but what you can do is you can scale the color. So right now it's white. So you, you pick a color. And then you pick another color and you'll see that it'll kind of interpolate over time. So it's going to start like super white and then this color. And then when it fades out here, it's kind of a bit darker. I think you can actually change the preview scene setting, uh, which is quite useful because I don't want to see the environment. That's much better. Yeah, there we go. Much, much better. But let me play some audio again and I'll, I'll add some different things and you'll see how I can kind of interpolate. That's a weird bug. Very interesting. <laughs> So sorry for starting and stopping. One thing you'll probably see in any single uh, Niagara tutorial is a curl noise force. It just looks cool. This is kind of the stupid thing to do because you want an analyzer to be very rigid and, you know, but I don't care about that. It just has to look cool. So let's add that one. There we go. Sorry about the flashing thing. I don't know why it's happening. Yeah, sorry. We're going to have to keep that. That must be a new bug. Right, so the curl noise force, you don't see it right now, but it's kind of going to dissipate the particles depending on the velocity. So if I put like 1000 here, you're going to see it kind of dissolves, which looks pretty cool. You can change the size of the noise. You can, and again, these values, you can change them depending on the audio. So you could like change the amount of like dissipation that happens on the general audio volume or whichever you want. You can just play around with settings and, you know, it looks pretty, it looks pretty cool. Maybe let's put 100 here. And I'm going to play it one last time just to kind of show what I did for the, like, uh, the video you saw just before. Right, you get the idea. You could technically spawn particles from this emitter if you want for some reason, if you're crazy. Like, already here is like, it's pretty reasonable. It could look better though. I mean, we only have 50,000 particles. That's, that's not enough, right? Uh, let's, uh, let's go to 100 more particles. There we go, 100,000 particles, 200,000, 300,000, four. Okay, <laughs> the computer is fine, so yeah, okay. Uh, this is pretty much the this is fine meme with like the dog burning in the house. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it still runs fine. So this is a pretty beefy CPU, but that's one thing I like about Niagara is you, you can just play around with it till it works. So 
you could just literally actually, since we have a bit more time, I'm just going to show you how to set up an oscilloscope from the same uh, principle. Wow, that's wild. Um, okay, cool. So if you want to turn this, like let's say your client says, okay, but can you do an oscilloscope like all uh, you know, smug? You can just say, yes, I can. Oscilloscope. And it's exactly the same setup. You just take the oscilloscope. Uh, you just plug it to the sample audio buffer. Plug the UVX into here. Plug this back into the multiplication. Apply scratch, compile. Go back here. Play audio. Now it's in the oscilloscope. Let me scale it a bit more. And there we go. So pretty easy. And that's pretty much like everything I did in the, the demos. You'll see that I kind of like to have this little dust effect that goes around. It's the same thing. It's spawning emitters from another emitter. So one interesting thing that maybe some oscilloscope nerds know about is if you plug the left channel as the x-axis and the right channel as the y-axis, we can create shapes. Uh, so let me show you a video that I muted because it's just two sine waves. Here we have a sine wave on the left channel, one on the right. And you can see how the frequencies kind of interact where you can create some, uh, you know, basic shapes and basic curves. This is just mathematical stuff, but, you know, I'm not smart enough to explain why it does those shapes. It just you know, looks cool. And now you can kind of visualize what I do. It's pretty much the same thing all the time. The curl noise, for noise force spawn emitter from another emitter. And there we go. So I could have just coded a day and say, okay, that works. That's nice. Uh, but then I realized that there are some people who actually make music with oscilloscope shapes. And there are plugins where you can convert images or three objects into audio. So I was like, okay, why limit myself to just basic shapes? As cool as they look, like why not actually create a sound to represent the Unreal logo? So I didn't even stop there. I went a bit further and then I started making music uh, and I kind of figured out it's probably the nichest music in the world because you need an oscilloscope to see what's happening. Uh, but yeah, so you'll see a couple of tests I did with uh, this principle. <laughs> I totally I don't know when, when to stop, so I actually have to <laughs> limit myself. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's once you get it to work, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's probably, like like I said, the nichest way to make music because you have like this audio file that you absolutely cannot change. It is interesting to see how audio effects changes the logo, like ring modulation is a pretty interesting one. A bit crusher kind of turns it into this like low poly version of the logo. But any drum you add, uh, will kind of destroy the logo itself, so you kind of have to figure out what music you're going to make. But I, I don't know many people who make oscilloscope art music. I know there's, a, there's, there's one guy who's like super famous, but I haven't seen really many other people. But the fact that I could figure out how to do this without being much of a programmer is just like showcases how fun it is to use Unreal because you have all the tools kind of readily available to you. And so this is kind of the final part where I bring everything together. Uh, unfortunately, right now, there's no way to put like a Niagara system in the widgets, which is pretty much the UI system. 
So I'm using a very stupid method where the particle system is actually in 3D space and I have a camera taking a picture of the particle system every frame and then saving that into a material. So it's, you know, it's not the most optimized thing, but like I said, I'm not the optimization guy. Uh, so yeah, cool. So actually let me full screen this because this is much better. There we go. I think it's Alt P. There we go. So this is the particle system that now you recognize, no mystery behind. So I created all this interface using the UI that I made using maths and then using the widget system in Unreal. And again, the blueprint thing is kind of just to kind of showcase what you can do. I'm pretty sure like if programmers saw what I did with the blueprints, they would probably hate me. But you know, if it works, it works. So what I did here is I took my you know XY slider and using meta sounds, so that's really everything together. Using meta sounds, I kind of added a filter that you can kind of change. I'm gonna play music just in a while. And yeah, tell you, I'm gonna play with it and you'll kind of figure out what everything does. And there we go, you get the, you get the main idea. Thank you so much. <laughs>